Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to 1922 Project. My name is Kelly and today I'm going to show you guys how I did this hat. I just finished it. Um, I didn't film the stitch out because I wasn't sure it was really going to work out the way I wanted it to. Um, I'm going to put the little thing back in. It makes it look nicer. Um, but I'm real happy with how it turned out. I do have a couple of other hat videos. Um, but I did this one a little bit differently and I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, but I just thought it might come in handy for some people. But first I have a little show and tell from a guest vlogger. So check that out. All right, show me your bracelet. I made a bracelet <laughs> and it took a long time. Okay, what else are you supposed to say on a YouTube video? Subscribe. <laughs> Okay, so as you guessed, it is spring break and um, she wanted to be on video, so she's on video. Um, it, it, we're at the end of spring break, so uh, next week I can hopefully be a little more productive. It's been lovely though, the weather here is great. It's a good deal. So here's what the deal is with this hat. So I use, for my hats, I use the Brother um, Hat Hoop and Driver, and in a minute when I turn you around, you'll see that. Um, one of the biggest complaints with this method is um, getting close enough to the brim of the hat. Um, it does set your the bottom of your design a little bit higher and oftentimes that's actually not a problem. Um, there's a couple of reasons why it was a problem with this hat. First of all, the design itself is pretty tall. You don't really want, I mean, another thing that people complain about with this um, hat hoop. Now, when I say I have the brother hat hoop and driver, it's for this machine. I do think there's a newer one. Um, and then there's a really fancy one you can buy that's like off brand. This is the um, hat hoop that comes with the brother PR 655. Um, so I do think some of the other ones have different capabilities. But this one's limited, um, maybe, let me see how big my design is. Um, I think it's a little less than 2.5 tall. It says it's 2.5, but I think it's a little smaller. Um, and then you can go like five inches wide, I think, which is plenty wide. Um, maybe not quite, yeah, I think you can. You can go like five inches wide, but this is limited. Um, which is okay. I mean, you can see what, like, how much bigger would you want it? You wouldn't want it any taller than this. And I didn't do anything special with the design itself. I just hooped it a little bit differently than I would if my design was shorter. Um, one of the problems I had with this particular design is the Y. So when you're looking at your machine and you've got your laser pointer, the center bottom, you know, it's not the center bottom of this A, it's the center bottom of this Y. And just that little bit makes, you know, the machine will only go so far down. Um, and so my design was going to start, the bottom of it was going to start like way up here, most of it other than the Y was going to be up much higher. So I had to kind of finagle it and um, hoop it a little bit differently. You'll see in a minute. So then this would have been way up here. Um, and I didn't want that, of course. So I, the way I hooped it is a little bit different than my previous video showing um, how I use this driver. So I'm not going to go into all of the basics. Um, you can refer to that other video um, to see that. I'm just going to show you specifically today how I move it down just a little bit. Now, if you look at all the charts or whatever, um, what I'm looking for, oh, this, this guy, um, you want, it's supposed to be a half an inch to three quarters of an inch. So you don't need to go, um, you know, super low. This is uh, so the Y is right at a half an inch, and then it goes a little bit taller for the rest of the letters. So, but your naturally, your um, hat hoop 
on this machine is going to go even higher than that. Um, and so it kind of looks goofy when you've got a big design like this. If you had, you know, just this middle section, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter that you can only go so far. You would just center it where you want it and stitch it out. Um, but with the, again, with this particular design, I, I just didn't want it up that high. So I'm going to turn you around. I'm going to show you how I would typically hoop a hat like this. And then I'm going to take you over to the machine and show you why it wouldn't work. So we'll start there. Okay. So here it is in the hat hoop set up how I normally have it. So one of the, um, big things. Well, a couple things. So when you're putting your, um, sorry, that's loud. Uh, when you're putting your sweatband under here, like typically I would line it up. Whoops. Caught. I would kind of just have it sort of flush with this. You never want to really cream it in there. Um, but I just kind of have it, you know, centered, not centered flush with that. And then I take this around and one of the big things, and I, I talk about this in my other video, is making sure that the teeth on this line up with this line. So I'm just gonna, and I don't even have stabilizer in here because we're not really stitching. So I really make sure that's all kind of lined up and that ensures that everything is straight and you kind of, you know, make sure your center line is good. And then you would take your clips and clip this down. Um, but, and again, this is how I would normally do it, but let me take you over to the machine and show you what that looks like. All right, got my design loaded and I've got my hat loaded. Um, I'm currently on needle three. I think earlier, um, I said something about the laser pointer. You don't have access to your laser pointer when you're using the hat hoop. You just kind of got to pull a needle down and see. Um, but look, I am at my, technically what's the top center, but what's the bottom of my design. And look how high up it comes. Can you guys tell? So I'm now at actually the top of where I actually stitched. And I wanted to get it all the way down here. Uh, you might be able to see it better when I come to the top. Let me do this top corner. So this is where I actually ended up stitching, but this almost touches that part of the hat if I were hooping it like I normally would. So let me take this off and show you how I did it to get around that. All right, so I haven't touched anything yet. It's still uh, hooped the normal way. What I did to bypass this. So <clears throat> your machine, when it's doing this, you know, what's the bottom of the um, design, but actually the top, you know, when you look at it on your machine, it's flipped. Um, you know, it comes down a certain amount and then starts stitching. So what we want to do is we want to scooch this hat. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. You want, we want to scooch the hat this way, not, not that way. That's going to make it even higher on the hat. We want to come this way with our hat. Well, how do we get around that? Here's what I did. Um, let me see if I can move you guys around just a little bit so you can see better. You've got these screws right here. Um, and probably when you first got your hat hoop and jig and all that good stuff, you would have adjusted that to, um, and if you have a really thick hat, sometimes you have to adjust that. But what I did is I just loosened those, not a ton. You just need them to be able to scooch this a little bit. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and unhook it, but leave it, um, to where it's kind of stable there. And so again, we want to pull it down this way. So that's basically what I did. You can't really do that unless you've adjusted those screws a little bit. So I kind of just paid attention to where my sweatband was. Um, again, normally I would have it closer there. I want to pull it back. And I think I pulled it back to about right there to where this bar 
is now hitting that sweatband, but this bar is angled a little bit, angled this way. So I kind of just kept pulling and you're still going to basically line it up, line your teeth up with that. It's just that you're coming this way. And I pay attention to these circles a lot. So you've got this edge of your hoop. And as long as those circles are coming off that edge the same amount, you're good. You should be straight. So now our circles are much further down than they were before, which means this whole thing, you know, it's now going to start stitching here. Now, the first time I did it, oh, and now we can go ahead and tighten these back up so things don't shift on us. Um, and again, this is hard to do at the angle I'm at. Um, and again, you would use your little clippy things to clip this on. And the first time I did it, I tried not to use the bill holder because I thought it might not work well. See how it does that? So you may be able to get away with not doing that. Uh, you know what? I don't have stabilizer here, um, which is causing this not to clamp down as tightly as it normally would. So let's just do that real quick. That way we can do it again anyway. Okay, so again, normally, sorry, that's annoying. Normally I would have this flush here. This time I'm gonna pull it out to a level that's comfortable. <laughs> For me, I don't wanna come too far back, but far enough and I should, my screws should be tilted enough for it not to be an issue, but we'll see. So kind of lock that in and I'm just sort of tugging this more towards me. Whoops, that's terrible. Okay, so again, ah, I'm all bunchy over here. That's better. So again, you can maybe try it without the um, bill holder thingy, or let's see if we can get it. There we go, there we go. So see how I'm still pretty lined up. I've still got a pretty flat surface to stitch on here. And again, typically you would have your clips here. I'm not gonna mess with that right now. Um, so let's take it over and see how that's different. Okay, so again, we're on needle three and see how now we're at the top of this B. We've come down from up here all the way to here, just by scooching our hat this way. Let's take a look at the bottom here as well. So it's showing that I'm way down here, but that's just again because of the Y. Oh, you can't hardly see that, but it's kind of lining up like about right here, um, a little bit lower than the two five, but that's again, because it's considering that Y as the bottom of it. So that is a much better uh, placement for this than coming all the way up here. So, and you can even see it, um, well, let me take this off. You know, you can tell normally, you can see the side here, you know, again, normally this would be back here. So that gave us that much space more to do our stitching. And then I just really, now you are in this too, this is a little different. Normally when I'm hooping, my teeth line up with the whole brim, but just having it line up where the stitching is gonna be is gonna be fine. 
Um, and then I just triple checked it to make sure that everything was straight. You could even uh, print your design and check it that way. But I always line up my centers. I know I'm pretty close. I always line up my centers with that center seam right there. And as long as that looks good, I go for it. All right, guys, that is it. That is how we did this super cute hat. Um, can you guys see that okay? I know I'm kind of at the wrong angle here with the window behind me, but um, so that's just a little trick. I know um, hats hats are a beast, man. They There are so many things you have to figure out. Oh, look, I have another show and tell. Look, oh, Spider-Man zip pocket. Um, so hats, hats are a beast. And, but anytime you can just learn a little trick or really take your time, again, don't be um, limited by that space. It's most of the time, you don't need anything different than that. Um, but for today we did. So I hope you guys found that helpful. I do think um, next time I am gonna do a uh, purse. I keep saying I'm gonna do a purse and then I don't do a purse, but I'm doing a purse that goes with this. And so I think I will for sure video that because I've been wanting to do some purses on this channel and I never do, um, mostly because I'm not a pro. Um, but it's this machine and it's a super fun machine. So anyway, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I hope if you're finishing spring break, you're excited for the kids to go back. If you're starting spring break, good luck. All right, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks, bye.